Hello everyone. Welcome to let's see, I think this might be the I check either the fifteenth or sixteenth episode of God's Honest Truth. Uh glad for you to have you join me today. Today's reading I'm taking from Genesis and it's all on climate change. All this fuss about climate change, you know. You had Jane Fonda Keeps getting locked up, thrown in jail for protesting, saying, World's only got 11 more years. You got AOC. World's only got 11 more years. You got all these people hollering. World's only got 11 more years. We got to, we need the Green Deal. Green Deal. I'm hoping to use the Bible to explain that to you. So, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer before I start this. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share your word. I pray that it speak the hearts of many, Lord, that uh, anyone lost, they'll seek you. Help me in my endeavors, keep me strong, keeping the faith and spreading your word. Thank you for everything, in Jesus' name, amen. So I want to start you off. I want to start you off. This is one of the reasons sin is what has made this planet grow worse. It started in the Garden of Eden, the moment that Eve ate of the fruit, forbidden fruit. And she gave it to Adam. So here you go, take a bite. And Adam does. Still this day, haven't figured that one out. You know, a woman tells you something to do, and then you turn around and do it without thinking. Because he was right there with her. He heard everything the devil had to say to her. Why well, he didn't say, hey, don't eat that. But he didn't do it. But after all that, you know, we went through the blame thing, a little history of it. Uh... God said, said, the Lord called, the Lord God called Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? See, then, people did that in the beginning. Adam and Eve, they didn't pay any more mind that they didn't have a stitch of clothes on. They walked around outdoors doing what they had to do, start naked. You know, no longer that way, you know. People get, uh, can't be somebody naked like they did in the beginning. Then the man said, the woman whom you gave to me, be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. So see, right off the bat, Adam blames the woman, you know. It was her fault. She gave it to me. I ate it. And Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put amenity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. That there is, is a him quoting prophecy which he talks about when Christ finally comes. The Satan will strike you out, which we call another crucifixion, bruises his heel. But Jesus rises from the dead and basically stomps on Satan. Takes the keys of heaven and hell. And uh, there's a reason the women have to go through this. The woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. So according to that, man's supposed to be, according to the Bible, be head of the house. So, of course, this day and time, it don't exactly go that way. Because women, there's a lot of women that just want to boss their men around, you know. But getting in the reason, climate change. This world was cursed. As Jesus, as the God said here, cursed is the ground for your sake. See, God there has done cursed the earth. He's cursed. He didn't curse man. He cursed the earth because everything came from the dirt. God took the dirt and made man. Took a rib from Adam and made woman. 
every creature, everything on the face of this planet, God made from what he had created, the planet itself. So he cursed it, which means now everything dies. Curse it is a ground for your sake, and told you shall eat of it all the days of your life. By thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you. And you shall eat the herb of the field, and the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to the dust you shall return. When you die, eventually once you're put in the ground, turn back to dirt. Uh, don't matter about embalming or anything else. If you go out there now and dig up some graves, you'll find, all you'll find probably bones left and Sometimes not even that. Their lining up is all dirt. But, uh, that is the curse of the planet. Now, God went through a time after creating it that as the world started to populate, God was sorry that he had made man on earth and he was grieving his heart. He was unhappy with man. The Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. God decided he was going to destroy all his steps. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives, eight people out of millions who populated the planet that he said, these people I will save because they're holy. You know, he found grace. God's grace overcomes a lot of stuff. So that's when God told Noah, I want you to build an ark. Now you got to remember back then in the beginning, the world consisted of one continent and the rest of it was surrounded by water. There wasn't no United States or North America. It was all one big deal. They didn't have boats. In other words, they, 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 they was nowhere to travel. They only had one piece of land. If they traveled, they traveled that one continent. But uh, God said, no, I want you to build a boat. Build this big ark. And it was going to be huge. He told him, you're going to take two of each kind of animal and put aboard this. Because I'm going to flood the earth. And I'm going to kill everything, all men, women. Every living thing, I'm going to wipe off the face of this earth. Because I'm sorry I made them. Only you, your wife, your sons and their wives will be saved. So I want you to build this ark. And they gave them the instructions, the measurements. And it took 120 years to build this ark. You can imagine people live around them. What you building, Noah? Well, God's going to send a flood and he's going to wipe out mankind. He's going to destroy everything. He told us to build this boat. And they laughed, you know, they laughed and mocked them. They had, for 120 years, they had to mock them because nobody else believed. Because as we know, in the end, only eight people entered that ark and the animals two by two. And uh, for, so for 120 years, he preached that message. Repent. The end is in now. You know, same way if somebody hollered out, repent because the end is near. You know, people, you know how we are. We look at somebody saying that and we say, oh, yeah, you know. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I was going, yeah, listen to that nut, which he may be telling the God's honest truth. The world could be close to ending. This, we consider this last, if you study the book of Revelation, we consider this to be the last church age. And when that ends, which is the time of Gentiles, that's when Jesus is supposed to return. There's supposed to be tribulation. But anyway, they laughed at Noah. So Noah built the ark, and of course the flood came, wiped out everything but him, his sons, and the animals they took on board. And uh, but he didn't do it all. Of course, during that time, when the water started falling, the water came up from the ground. It divided the con continent uh, into what we see today: North America, South America, you know, Europe, Middle East. It divided the land. They say you, you can look at a map and you can basically push them all back together and see where at one time was a continent. 
that they all fit like a puzzle. So uh, when the earth erupted from that water and it settled back down in layers, that's where you got your fossil tables from. Because in order to make a fossil, it has to be buried in mud quickly, and that's what happened. That's why there's places like even even here in Lookout Mountain, you can go up there and find seashell it's in the rocks. How did that get there? Even at places where there's no ocean around, you can see pieces of sea life. And of course, that's why all over the place fossils have been found, because that's where the planet uprooted. Uh... You know, there's all kind of signs. The more archaeologists dig and stuff like that, the more they've been digging up, proving what happened, you know. In other words, the story of evolution is just a bunch of crap. You know, no such thing as evolution. Even Darwin, when he was doing his book, said, hey, you know, don't take this as God's honest truth because... Later, science would come along and probably prove me wrong, and it did. But the world's got so quick from teaching this in schools instead of the Bible. You know, if we really wanted to know the truth about how this world's going to go, how life itself is going, we would go back to the book. We study the Word of God because that's where, where truth lies, you know. And, and the world's getting worse. You can look at it, you know, the election going on. We see the country divided. Half of the country, they want to live the way they want to live. They don't want to follow God. They curse God. They curse anything to do with the Bible. I, even the other night, I seen a commercial on the TV, which I'd, surprised me. I'd never seen it, and it was from Freedom of Religion, atheists. You know, going, let's keep religion out of politics. You know, if you got men of God ruling that God puts there. How can you take religion out of politics? I've always said this and will always believe this. Uh, separation of church and state was not meant to protect the government from religion. It was meant to protect religion from the government. And it's been turned around. In other words, because when this country was formed, this nation, they had a Bible. They prayed before each meeting. They depend on the guidance of God in creating this country and creating our constitution. It's even really that uh, that uh, all men are created equal, unalienable with unalienable rights. If you look at all the monuments, go to Washington and go up around to some of the monuments. You see, there's one up there that's got Bibles all around it and inside Scripture. You know, you can hear, you can see where the forefathers wrote. Where they were dependent on God in form this country. Abraham Lincoln prayed and read the Bible. You know. Uh, and now we have, you know, people wanting to live the way they want to live. Do what they want to do. And I, I, I'm going to tell you. It's hard to live in this age and time. And try to walk with God the way we're supposed to walk with him. Because there's just so much temptation everywhere. We, uh. People worship the thing, things created by hands. I mean, we have TV, cell phones, cars. We have all this stuff to have desire for instead of God. And it's going to get bad because the Bible says it will. But the world is not going to end just because man said we're destroying the planet. Man's not going to pull a plug on this planet. God will. Now, God, man, by sinning, people sinning, when it gets to the point where God's had enough, whoop, that's it. You know, you get to a time where he's not going to find enough righteous people in this world where he says, it's time, it's time to end this. He's going to destroy the planet because he says, you know, he promised never to destroy it with water again, but uh, next time he's going to destroy it with fire. People holler at this plant's going to burn. Yeah, that's going to burn up, but it's because that's what God has said, has said he was going to do. In, in Revelation, you see where even a meteor comes from space and destroys a big portion, a big portion of the planet and ends life. Uh, it's not going to be pretty. 
and you can preach this. I can tell this all day long to people, and they're not going. They're not going to pay any attention to it. And so there's another nut. But it is the truth if you if you got in the Word and you said studied prophecy, and you look at all the things that this Bible has said that have come true. Even now, like I said, archaeologists keep finding proof that, hey, the Bible is true. It's like with the story of Jonah in the well. A lot of people thought that was just a fable, but I forgot what year it was. They found the city of Nevinida, uh, however you say that, the city that God wanted Jonah to go and preach to. They found that city. The Bible talks about it. A lot of things in the Bible. Every day they find something. They've, they've uh, dug up the city of David, showing, you know, the way things were built. Uh, time goes by, they eventually uncover stuff. I mean, you got the temple that no longer stands in Jerusalem. God, for, you know, Jesus said not a stone would be unturned. It wouldn't. 70 AD, they, the Romans tore that thing apart. Scattered them all. Bible claimed that uh, they would be scattered when Nebuchadnezzar took them for 70 years. That came true. It was all laid out in the Bible. The uh, Bible's true. You have to study it, though, and a lot of people, you know, I, I, ain't, with, I ain't reading that old thing. You can't believe that thing. It was written by men. It was written by men inspired by God who had the spirit in them when they wrote it. Uh, you sitting there where God spoke. One day, the world will find out the truth of the word. Because we'll face judgment and we'll answer for everything we've ever done. You know, things that we might think are sacred being revealed. You know, we ain't gonna get by. You don't get by with sin. Sooner or later, you'll answer for it. But uh, the world is gonna be destroyed by fire in the end, and it's gonna be done by God when God says it is time. I always talk about climate change. We gotta quit eating cows. You can't plow. God said, "All things created by Him are good. If you pray for it, it is saints. Ask for it to be sanctified. It's in the Bible." Paul wrote about it, and uh, he says all things are good. It's like he told Peter when Peter had his vision, when the woman started preaching to the Gentiles instead of just the Jews. The sheep came down with all these animals on it, four foot stuff, things that they were that Jews were not supposed to think. God said, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter said, I have nothing unclean as such these lips, and God told him, don't call anything that I have clean as unclean. After from that time on, because man is free to eat whatever God created but on that planet. Even Noah, when they came off the ark, they were vegetarians after the flood, and God told them, kill and eat. Not only have you got the plants and stuff, but now I now give you meat. You think he's allowed them to eat whatever. It wasn't until the Jews come along that they put all these restrictions on what they ate during that period because he was trying to get 400 and something years of being with the Egyptians out of their system. So, uh, all this stuff that the left keeps preaching is just a bunch of hogwash. And I feel we got a lot of young people being led to vote for these people. Yeah, I'm mixing religion and politics because I think God put Trump in power. And you see how everything, even though everything is going good with the economy, jobs, everything else, people hate him. The other half of the left, I, I don't care how much good he's done. I don't like him. They accuse him of being racist, this and that, and he's not. I mean, you know, if you can research and find evidence, there was one where he did, he was on the David Letterman show in 2013, before anything about him running for president. And you can see what kind of man he was. 
you know, no different than anybody else. All of sin and fall short of the glory of God. To stand and point a finger at a man and accuse him of all kind of things that he hadn't done is not right. You know, right. It, it, and just to, just because everybody else, the media loved him before he ran for president. They didn't have anything bad to say about him. And as soon as he runs for president, oh, this is a big joke. We don't like him. And they just, from day one, all the leftists wanted to do, Democrats, is before he even got elected, if he wins, we will impeach him. For what? He wasn't even in office yet. And then they create all this story about collusion, which everything that they have tried to throw at him, they have not been able to prove. All the illegal stuff and everything all was done by the Democrats. They create all this mess, the lies, the cheating, and, and you people are drinking the Kool-Aid. The media is bought. They're told what to say. They not. They don't report the news. They're not reporters. All they're doing is reporting what the people who own them tell them. It's got to stop. I hope you enjoyed this message today. I thank you for being here. God bless y'all. Have a good day. I'm done.